Okay, so it's assignment three for psychology for sports performance, and it's covering teamwork and leadership. Um, we're looking at learning outcome three, know the role of the group dynamics in a team sport. Um, and we've got P5, which is identify four factors which influence group dynamics and performance in team sport. We've got M3, which explains four factors which influence group dynamics and performance in team sport. And we've got the distinction criteria D2, analyze four factors which influence group dynamics and performance in team sport. So we'll go inside the brief and we'll have a look. Effectively, the scenario is telling you that you're an apprentice psychologist for the Bristol Academy of Sport and that you're going to look at a team and look at the uh, group dynamics within that team. So here's the task. Okay, so in pairs, you're going to create a PowerPoint. Um, so the first part is it's going to look at, so we've got the pass and the merit on this task, we're going to look at the formation of teams. Okay, so that's part one. So that might be our slide one. I mean, if we're just going for the pass, all we would do is we would describe forming, so what forming is, describe storming, what storming is, describe norming, what is what is norming, and then describe performing. So quite easy to do, um, and then not to mention adjourning. If you want the merit, then you explain them, so why they happen. Um, you might even link a sports-specific example to that. Then you go on to Steiner's model, the Ringelman effect and social loafing. So you describe Steiner's model if you want the pass. If you want the merit, you explain it, so how it works. Um, Ringelman effect, again, you describe it if you want the pass. If you want the merit, you explain it. So, for example, if I'm looking at, um, if we go for social loafing, for instance, for example, uh, social loafing is where... Um, a group comes together and there are some individuals who, who don't put their maximum effort in because they become dependent on the rest of the group doing the work. Why does this happen? And then I'd explain some reasons why that happens to get myself the merit. Okay, on cohesion, um, so you look at task and social cohesion, describe what task is, describe what social cohesion is. Um, if you want the merit again, you're going to explain them. So. What, why we have them, what impact they have on, on sports performance. Um, and then you'll look at factors affecting cohesion. So there are certain factors that we've covered in lesson. Um, leadership affects cohesion. Um, the environment affects cohesion. So look at certain factors that affect cohesion. State what they are if you want the pass again. But if you want the merit, you explain them. Okay. Then we look at leadership. So we'll describe what a prescribed leader is and what an emergent leader is. Again, we've done this in lesson. If you want the merit, again, you explain the how and the why. Um, then you look at the styles of leadership. I think we've done three styles, which is autocratic, democratic, and laissez-faire. Um, so you, you describe what they are, and if you want to, you explain how they're implemented or used. Um, then we're going to go on to theories of leadership. You don't have to do all of them, actually. You can you can take a select. So you could just decide, actually, you only want to cover um, the trait leadership theory and the behavioral leadership theory. And you describe what they are, and then you explain them. Just to reiterate the explanation point here, so when, you, when you're explaining how and why each of these factors can affect performance, team performance, and you use sports-specific examples throughout to try and um, bring out your merit. So again, I'll give you an example. If we go up to here, okay, this is the forming. So you'll say this is what forming is, and then you'll go, this is why forming happens, because actually a t the group of individuals need to come together to form the team, which is fantastic. Um, how does this affect performance? Well, actually, initially, people are, are trying to get on with each other, so it potentially has a positive impact on performance. Um, if we think about uh, the start of the season, um, um, or maybe even if we look at Eddie Jones's reign when they when he put the team together, the new team for the England, actually had a positive impact on it because they all came together and they came they were working together as one. So that forming process initially was really positive during that pro during that stage. Um, if we're going for the distinction, this is how we tackle it. Okay, so what I suggest on this bit, by the way, is the slide for each. Okay, on the distinction, you'll be required to present a case study. So I would suggest that you and your partner select a team. It can be an academy team that you perform in, or it can be an outside team. It could even be 
um, a, a team such as you know the likes of Manchester United or the England um, rugby team. But I, I would probably try and stick to something you know inside out. So what you're going to do is you're going to explore how and why the team dynamics affect your chosen team performance, either positively or neg negatively. So you'll look at your team and you'll explore the, for the stages of formation. So you'll look at forming, storming them. How did it have or how did those processes have an impact on the team? How did they affect the team? Okay. You'll then explore the process losses within that team. And again, you'll look at um, the impact it's had on the team, not only on the pitch, but off the pitch. You'll then look at the uh, types of cohesion and the levels of cohesion within the team and look at the impact on performance. And then you'll look at the leadership types and styles within that team and say, well, actually, these are the leadership types and styles within the team that we looked at. This is the impact it had on performance, positive, negative, etc. And then finally, you'll look at the overall strengths and weaknesses in relation to these above factors. OK, what you must do is you must include two references to support what you're saying within your slides OK, on this distinction criteria. And then you must comment on them references throughout when you're presenting. OK.